Eunice was three years younger than Rosemary. She took her on as crew in sailing races in Hyannis Port, volleyed with her on the tennis court, and made a grand tour of Europe with her when they were both teenagers. But Eunice did not see Rosemary for at least a decade after Joe Kennedy had his daughter lobotomized at age 23. That failed attempt to cure the mental illness that compounded Rosemary's disabilities left her exiled in a Catholic institution in Wisconsin. It was Eunice who brought Rosemary back into the heart of the family after a stroke in 1961 silenced Joe Kennedy's powerful voice. And it was Eunice and her rage and her guilt at Rosemary's treatment that fueled her lifelong efforts to empower those with intellectual disabilities. Eunice worked for the State Department two years before Jack arrived on Capitol Hill in 1947. She administered a task force on juvenile delinquency in the Justice Department 14 years before Bobby tackled that issue as Attorney General. She worked with women in a federal prison more than 25 years before Ted took on prison reform in the United States Senate. She turned the family's unfocused charitable foundation into an engine of social change on behalf of those with intellectual disabilities. And in doing so, she carved a role in national politics at least as consequential as that of her more celebrated brothers. She wore poodle skirts embroidered with her brother's name during Jack's campaigns. But Eunice, alone among the sisters, would not be relegated to the ornamental role assigned to women in the Kennedy family. Richard Nixon remembered the Georgetown Row House she and her brother shared in 1947, when he and Jack were freshman congressmen. After dinner parties, Eunice would adjourn with the men to talk politics, lighting up her own cigar and leaving the women behind to gossip in another room. In much the same way, for the next half century, Eunice pushed her way into rooms where decisions got made, and she influenced policy across nine presidential administrations. Eunice began teaching children with intellectual disabilities to swim and to ride horses at her estate in Maryland in 1962. Sports had nurtured her own self-confidence, and she was certain that what she called Camp Shriver could do the same for children hidden away in institutions or isolated at home. Fifty years later, Special Olympics, the successor to that small backyard camp, serves millions of people across the globe. For her, ethical consistency required opposition to all policies that devalued human life. That meant abortion, as well as capital punishment, euthanasia, and social and economic injustice. Privileged as her life was, she did not escape the sexism of the times or her male-dominated family. Eunice said it best two years before her death. I experienced the sting of rejection as a woman who was told that real power was not for me. Because she refused to listen, Eunice Kennedy Shriver left a legacy as profound as any of her brothers. Mm -hmm.